ever since the new AI noise reduction came out inside of Camera Raw and Lightroom, I've had a lot of people ask me, can you use the masking tools to mask that noise reduction in and out of certain parts of the photo? Um, especially if it came from a third party app, a lot of those had uh, masking built into it. So the short answer is no, you can't. Now the longer answer is there is there is a noise reduction adjustment with your masking tools. That's not the one you want. It's not the, the good one that you want, but there is a slightly clunky, but very usable workflow that if you do need masking with the noise reduction we can do, let's take a look at how it's done. I'm inside a Lightroom Classic and I'm gonna to head to the detail panel and I'm gonna leave the, the all the settings basically at their default. So it applies a little bit of sharpening to it. Um, and this would work the same in Camera Raw. If we go to our masking tools and I were to just do a quick mask onto the photo here and I scroll down, you'll see that there is a noise feature in the masking tools, but that's the old noise feature. That's not using the new AI noise reduction that we're, we're you know, everybody's talking about here. Uh, incidentally, <clears throat> if you do have a question on that, that new feature, I wrote a whole FAQ on the website. It's in the description. I'll point you to that because that answers all your questions uh, for that. So if you do have a question before posting a comment, take a look at that. But this noise adjustment here is not what we're looking for. We're, we're not going to get we're not going to get what we want from that. OK, so uh, let's go ahead here. Let's just delete that mask. So we will have to go into our detail panel and I'll click the denoise button. It's going to open up that preview button. And if I think I'm going to go if I think I'm going to to actually try to mask this, I'm probably actually going to go a little bit more heavy handed than I, I might normally do. Okay. If I wanted to get it all done in one shot, I might go a little bit less and just split the difference. And it's definitely going to be some noise in the background, definitely some noise over the subject. I actually don't think that looks bad. I, I think, I think it's almost like it's adding masking for us. But if you want a little bit more control over the masking, what I would say is lean toward a little more of a heavy handed noise reduction, make things a little bit smoother, and then take care of that inside of your masking. Okay, see it says about 25, 30 seconds to, uh, to render here. Uh, I'm just gonna cancel because I already did that. So that will save us a little bit of time in the video. So there is my rendered. It's gonna create a DNG. Again, check that FAQ if you got questions about that whole part. But um, it created our duplicate DNG file. And then right over here, grouped it in with my original raw file. So what I do is I'm just gonna hold down the command key on Mac, control key on PC, and select that one as well. So they're both targeted. If you look down here in the film strip, they're both targeted there. And then I'm gonna head up here to the photo menu, go down to edit in and open as layers inside of Photoshop. And what that'll do is that'll bring both photos into Photoshop and it'll stack them on top of each other. And what it's done here is it's stacked the noise reduction version on top of the non-noise reduction version. There's no rule to it, so you can flip-flop it. It just changes the way that you have to do your masks. So if you want to, you can flip-flop this to make it look like mine. Again, noise reduction version is on top. We're gonna go up here to our, uh, our quick selection tool, or we can just go here to select subject as well. If you select the quick selection tool, it opens up select subject. We always wanna make sure we choose the cloud option and we'll click on select subject there. So it should do a good job of making an auto selection for us, at least get us closer to the way there. So now that we have a selection active, I need to add a layer mask to it. Here's what I want. I want, I want the noise reduction to stay in the background, okay? because generally the, the noise isn't helping the background, especially when it's a blurry background. It, it, to me, it's a little bit more pleasing when it's smoother because it helps that blurriness. We don't really want it, too much texture back there. A little bit's okay, but. Um, so we'll go in there and what we want is we want the noise reduction to stay on the background, but get removed from the bird. So how do we do that? Well, the easy way to do it is just click on your add layer mask icon the only problem is, is that does the opposite. It made a mask where the noise reduction is now removed from the background. You've got a couple easy ways to, to do this. You could press Command or Control I while on the mask. Uh, if you have your properties panel open on the mask, you can just hit invert and it just flips black to white. If you want a little keyboard shortcut, I'll undo. If you got your selection, you can hold down your option key on Mac, Alt on PC. You can also click on that layer mask icon and it'll add that layer mask in reverse for you. So it's the exact opposite of what it would do the other way. 
Also, this is a perfect time. Very, very quick word from our sponsor. I promise, keep it to 30 seconds here. Uh, if you're into bird photography, I get messages every day from people that say that my guide to bird photography has helped them get past guessing. And that's really what I want to do. I want to take the beginner, early intermediate stage. And I want you to get past guessing whether or not you're going to get the shot. You should know you're going to get the shot. Okay. I've got my guide to help you. Not only the technical and the settings and the gear, but also the creative part of it. Cause I think that's just as important. A lot of environmental factors, the sun, the wind, you put all that together. It's a challenging genre, but you can get there. You can get there and you can get to the point where we're having a lot of fun with it. And I think that's really what counts. So hope you'll swing by and check it out. Okay, so we now have our two layers on top of each other. We have our noise reduction layer on top, but the noise reduction is hidden from the bird. It is masked away. So if I press Command or Control Plus a couple of times to zoom in, okay, if I zoom in on the photo, you'll see we have the noise reduction applied to the background, but it is not applied to the bird. If I turn this layer off, you will see the whole photo with the noise, okay? So there's no noise reduction on the bottom layer. On the top layer, the noise reduction is only affecting the background, it's not affecting the bird. Easy fix from here is if we want to split the difference, what we would do is click on our layer mask that we have added here. Head up to the window menu, you're gonna go to your properties panel, okay? Mine's already open. Here's this, is what it looks like. This is the properties for the mask. And the density control is essentially an opacity setting for the mask. If you look at it, when the density is to 100%, the mask is black and white, okay? And the, the area that we're talking about here, the bird is all black. And then if we take this and we drag it down, we start to see that area becoming gray. If we took it all the way down to zero, it's as if we added a layer mask to the layer, but we didn't do anything with it because we just brought that layer mask opacity down to zero. Okay, so now the noise reduction is affecting the whole layer. At 100%, it's not affecting the whole layer. It's just affecting the background. And then somewhere in between, now it's kind of affecting the bird, kind of not. Again, it's about 50% opacity over there. So this number is arbitrary. You know, it's gonna be what it needs to be for your photo. Again, I usually like 40, 50%. I think that's a, a good happy medium. I like bringing in a little bit of texture here. When I bring it all the way down to zero, it does look a little smooth. And I think the texture, I think the texture actually improves the detail a little bit. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of it in the background, but over the bird, I am. So for me, uh, that's a pretty good place. And then the other thing that I would do is maybe just bring the opacity here down to about 85, 90% of the entire noise reduction layer. And that'll bring a little bit of that noise back into the background. Again, a little bit of noise is not bad. We don't need smooth, plasticky photos all the time. Um, some of that noise helps, I believe it helps the overall photo, a little bit of texture. It helps improve, I think, the, the perceived value of the sharpness so it doesn't look plasticky, but super sharp, right? All right. So bring that back out here. And I think at a normal level, again, honestly, we would never really see, you can actually see the noise when I turn it off at a normal zoom level. But I think once we zoom in here, this is much more prepared for a tight crop if we wanted to, or a larger print. We've got the best of both worlds. And then from here, you just head to the file menu, you click on save. That's It's going to save a copy. So it's got to, uh, it's going to save a copy based on your Lightroom preferences and what file type it's going to be. And it's going to return that back over into Lightroom. And that would become the new file that you would now work with and print and share and share on social media or your website portfolio, whatever that happens to be. Also, if you're looking for more on that AI noise reduction feature inside of both Camera Raw and Lightroom Classic, I did another video where I take a deeper look at it. I talk about, you know, what it is, how to use it, um, but also the order, you know, what's the workflow in order to use it. So if you're looking for another video to check out, that'd be a great one to go watch next.